In the headline, suspect in police custody after Vagrant's body is discovered on Bayfront early Friday morning. Police say they have solved 8 out of 12 homicides recorded so far this year and Foreign and CARICOM Affairs Minister Francine Barron addresses OAS Assembly in Mexico. I am Kenny Williams with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. First up, police are confident they will soon charge the suspect arrested on Friday in connection with the death of Anderson Carbon, the vagrant better known as Push-Up. Idona Jean Baptiste reports on the death which has sparked quite a bit of public discussion. Anderson Carbon was found lying face down in a pool of blood on the defense wall of the Roseau Bayfront opposite the High Court. Bayfront was cordoned off as police gathered evidence at the crime scene. Head of the Criminal Investigations Department, Superintendent Davidson Valerie, told the media at a police news conference on Friday that they were informed about the discovery of the body a little after 4 a.m. The medical practitioners were called to the scene and the body was pronounced dead at about 5.43 a.m. The deceased appeared to have been struck to the head with, while he was asleep, lying on the bayfront. He appeared to have sustained a cut to the left ear and abrasion to the upper cheek. There was a trail of blood on both sides of the wall, and a concrete slab was found next to the, the, the deceased. At this moment, one man of Rosu is in custody and is assisting the police with the investigations. 32-year-old Carbon is originally from Boetica. He was the victim of many attacks, including one last July where he was treated for severe burns. Carbon earned the nickname Push-Up from telling passers-by he could do push-ups for a dollar. Police Chief Daniel Carbon says it appears that Paros, as he describes them, are being targeted and his men are taking the matter very seriously. Based on our, our, our pre preliminary investigations, um, taking into consideration what we have so far, especially in relation to the murder of Andy Carbon this morning, we believe the suspect that we have can help us to make the necessary connections based on the preliminary investigations that we have. I, I do not want to go too much in depth into the, into the investigations, but you will be apprised at the right time. Meantime, 12 murders have been recorded for the year so far, marking an increase already when compared to 2016 statistics. Police are reporting that eight of these murders have been solved. We have, since the beginning of 2017, observed an incline in the number of murder reports that have been brought to the police. This year appears to have a, a spike in that we have now realized some 12 murders. It is already over last year's number of 10. And the previous year of nine, Officer in charge of the Major Crimes Unit Assistant Superintendent Matthew Cuffey says his department has been defying the odds to solve recent murders. The first murder report was received on the 4th of January 2017. And this one was that of Val de la Ville of Lao Road, Lubia. And the last one was sometimes in the early hours of this morning. Now, most of the matter of these reports we have received so far um, have been solved, as he rightly said. It has been solved. That the persons have been charged and brought before the court, and these matters are pending um, at the court. We have been challenged with the operate um, writ of these reports. However, we have put our resources together and I can say we have been very successful in that regard. 
In more headline stories, Foreign and CARICOM Affairs Minister Francine Barron has quoted an ECLAC report which concludes that 40% of the Caribbean's debt is incurred from having to respond to natural disasters. ECLAC is the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean. It has developed a number of information systems related to economic and social development in Latin America and the Caribbean. The Foreign Affairs Minister told her regional counterparts during a panel discussion at the OAS General Assembly in Mexico this week, identifying the region's challenges is critical in helping the OAS facilitate development and prosperity among its member states. Our economies in the Caribbean are largely reliant on micro, small and medium enterprises that comprise, I am informed, more than 90% of businesses, two-thirds of the jobs and approximately 30% of GDP. How do we assist micro, small and medium enterprises to make them more productive, innovative and more profitable? How do we add value to our abundant raw materials and primary agricultural produce? How do we encourage or facilitate public-private partnerships? The two main challenges that have been identified to small business development is the lack of adequate technical capacity and limited or no access to affordable financing. We all know the challenges that the OAS faces with financing, but this does not take away from the fact that it can still play a useful role in leveraging its resources by forging partnerships between and among states and with sub-regional, regional, and international organizations to share best practices and experiences and facilitate investments. The OAS is assisting some CARICOM countries adapt and implement the U.S. Small Business Development Center model to strengthen institutions that work with small businesses. We thank the U.S. government for the funding that it has provided in that regard. These centers are an important component of the strategy to improve the performance of small business in our in businesses in our economies and are adaptable to individual country needs. They are practical, providing the technical tools and expertise to provide quality one-on-one -on -one support services to MSMEs. These centers will also combine the technical, financial, and human resources of, of academia, the public and private sectors, using a results-based approach. There is continuous evaluation of the economic impact being generated by the efforts. There is also a focus on raising awareness to promote the inclusion of disaster risk management principles into the business planning process for MSMEs. This is key to building resilience and mitigating the negative impacts of climate change in a part of the world where vulnerability to natural disasters is undeniable. The minister also called for OAS national offices in member states to be made fully functional. She believes they play an important coordinating role and can serve as an essential source of technical support to member states. In other news, Health Minister Dr. Kenneth Daru says government has the eye care of the nation top on its agenda. Currently, the Mission Milagro project being executed in collaboration with the Venezuelan government is in Rotation 1 where senior citizens from the St. Joseph, Castle Bruce, La Plaine and Rosal Health districts are being evaluated and operated on for pterygium and cataract. Additionally, the I Can See Clearly program which screens schools children for various problems is also ongoing. The program is being done in partnership with the Cuban government. Dr. Daru says when the new National Hospital is completed, special focus will be placed on ensuring that Dominicans have the facilities to benefit from top quality eye care services. With the advent of the new hospital, we're hoping of course that um, we'll have um, an increased number of the services, of the service. In fact, if you take a walk to the um, where the old um, internal quarters used to be, the water tank, you will see that construction has already started. Um, in, of the foundation being dug for an eye hospital, a separate eye clinic, completely with its own theater and conference rooms, etc. So, um, so we, we we're hoping to see a very much improved um, um, ophthalmologic service um, here 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 in Dominica, the National Hospital. Of course, we also have to discuss or talk about then, of course, additional human resource and 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 and, and all of this. The second rotation for the Mission Milagro gets underway on 3rd July, where Dominicans from the Margot, Portsmouth and Granby Health districts will undergo the relevant testing, evaluation and surgery sessions.
Bear in mind that between now and I think somewhere around the 8th of July like this, your nurses will be calling you up. The FMPs will be doing their part. So the times that you miss the call and you realize it could have been coming from one of us, please either try to get back to us or stay tuned, we will be getting back to you because essentially we want to make sure that at the start of the second rotation, everybody whose names is on the list, of course, is um, have been through the pre-operative um, testing that is at the health center level um, to move you into the pre-evaluative testing. But the most important thing is that be alert because the nurse is going to call you and on the day she tells you to present yourself, try to bring somebody with you because you might be a little you know, a little groggy or you might um, have a little difficulty with your vision so you might always want to have somebody there with you, okay? And if you essentially speak Creole, try to make sure that at least the person that you bring along with you can do a little translation for you as well. You are watching Channel 5 News when we return to harmful amphibian species and what's being done to eliminate them. Thanks for staying with us. The public is being advised to be vigilant against two amphibian species harmful to humans, pets, and the natural environment. The Forestry Division has declared the cane toad and the Cuban tree frog invasive species. An invasive species is described as a living organism, such as an animal not native to a specific location and which have a tendency to spread to a degree believed to cause damage to the environment, human economy, or human health. In the wild, these amphibians compete with native animals for food. The discharge from their poisonous glands can cause death to animals. It can also be an irritant to humans. This um, invasive species, the cane toad, it gets up to 2.5 kilograms and has a, a length that varies between 10 to 15 centimeters. On records, it has reached up to 24 centimeters. It has some toxic glands. It is to, for you to identify it, it is dull green to darkish in color with a lot of warts on its back, like warts. And under, by the end of it, it's more or less lighter in color. A keen toad can lay at least 24,000 eggs in one year. Surveillance and control measures in place have seen a sharp drop in the cane toad from at least 20 in 2015 to 1 in 2016. The Cuban tree frog was recently found in Bellevue Chopin. This frog is also invasive. It can be varies in colors from white, gray, brown. It's also invasive. And um, it also has secretions of glands, some poisonous glands and it's smaller than the cane toad but they are invasive as well they would eat um, anything they are bigger than the little one native tadpoles they would um, eat other amphibians even birds small birds and our was the small snakes baby snakes they they can eat it as well next up a promise made to the people of Campbell has been fulfilled this as 37 individuals in the community will benefit from $250,000 promised to them from development projects. Earlier this year, during a town hall meeting in Campbell, Prime Minister Skerritt pledged a quarter million dollars to assist small business owners, farmers and potential business owners. At a handing over ceremony on Thursday, Parliamentary Representative for the Mao constituency, Reuben Blackmore, advised recipients to use the money for the intended purposes. I want to also ask of you to promise me something. Promise me that the monies will be used for the intended purposes. Because if you fail to do so, you will be failing not only yourself, but you will be failing your entire community and the country by extension. Never you forget that somebody has to pay for it. The money will be distributed in varying amounts to the numerous recipients, some of whom spoke about their plans for use of the funds. I am a proud owner of A&J Viewpoint by Incambe. Mr. Blackmore, I would like to thank you for whatever you gave me today. I will be satisfied. Thank you very much and thank you to the chairperson, Ms. Terry Sentile, and thank you to the Prime Minister. In spite of my age, I decided um, with my family 
let's put something together. We are endeavoring on working on a, a greenhouse and probably some chicken. I'm happy to know that I am one of the recipients. I would like to thank Honorable Raven Blackmore, our power rep, and the government of Dominica for this small business program. Although it's a small start, but it's a big start for most of us because most of us, we really need the help. Moving on to agriculture, where farmers are expected to take a new approach to their trade as a new farm certification program is being implemented. Idona Jean Baptiste explains. The farmer's certificate will complement requirements by the country's Fresh Produce Export Quality Control Act of 2009. The Dominica Bureau of Standards is the regulating body for the act. Although the act makes reference to the certification of exporters, packing houses, and fresh produce, it also mentioned that any commodity going through the national packing houses of certified fresh produce packing house must come from a certified farm. So in that, we have implemented a national farm certification program where we are working with farmers to get the farm certified based on what we call Dominica Good Agricultural Practices. Royer observed that they have been receiving regular complaints about the quality of local fresh produce shipped overseas. The Bureau has been receiving a lot of reports from our traditional trading partners for fresh produce like St. Kitts, Barbados, Antigua, Guadalupe, Matic, as to the poor quality of the commodities they receive. Okay. Um, most of the time it's not too much for the fault of the farmers or the processors, but we have some issues when it comes to shipping. Systems have been put in place to advance the farm certification. We have put the systems in place. We have erected model farms throughout the, throughout the um, agricultural regions, which can be used as a training ground for the farmers in, in, in the vicinity to see what a certified farm looks like. You know, so we are not just tackling the exporters, and the packing houses, we are addressing the issue for the value chain from farm to market. So the people we trade in, trade with, can be satisfied that they get something that's wholesome, safe for consumption, and in turn will increase the demand for Dominica fresh produce exports. The farm certification program is receiving the support from the banana accompanying measures, the promotion of regional opportunities for produce through enterprises and linkages, PROPEL, and the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture. Edona John Baptist, Channel 5 News. That's news, your sports highlights, next. First up in sports, India held their own against the West Indies bowling attack to finish the first one-day international on 199 for the loss of three wickets on Friday. Consistent rainfall affected the first day's play. However, India's Shikhar Dawan contributed a solid 87 to his team's total, with A. Rahani scoring 62 and Virat Kohli undefeated on 32. Jason Holder picked up one for 34, Devendra Bishu one for 39, and Alzari Joseph one for 53. The teams will meet up again on Sunday for the second ODI at Queen's Park Oval. On the basketball scene, St. Mary's Academy defeated Pierre Charles Secondary 87-59 to become the new champions of the Sports Division Under-15 Schools Basketball Championships. Kohath Baron was the star on the court, netting a game high of 31 points for SMA, with much-needed assistance of 18 each from Ravik Harriet and Malik Laurent. Jonathan Henderson added 14. For PCSS, Mini Link scored 22 points and Sherwin Williams 14. St. John's Academy were the defending champions. Previously, the under-15 was in the form of a festival. This year, it's a full league. Meantime, snipers and the Kelvodaro Hurricanes dominated Division I basketball in the 2017 Flow DABA League on Thursday. In Game 1, snipers scored 76-63 against Interschool. Kiloy Paul had the hot hand for snipers, bringing in 35 points, Mohan Thomas 17 and Shannon Matthew 10 points. In a losing effort, into school's J.V. Bellot contributed 24, Joshua Henderson and Aaron Hippolyte 11 points each. In the final game, Hurricanes successfully defended their home court, scoring 51 against Digital Clouds 41. 
Top scorers for Hurricanes were Jonathan Mills, 13 points, and Dwight Paul, 8. Delton Charles and C. Ambo, 11 points each for Clouds. Sunday's games will feature an under-17 encounter of Horsey Vibration Lightning versus Pitchler Sports Club Falcons at 6 p.m. At 8 p.m., Elijah Law Chambers Thunderers will do battle with Intellico Security Service Raiders in the Premier League. Both games are scheduled for Massac Hard Court. Sports continues with football, where FIFA course instructor Peter Pendergrass encouraged referees to be fair in their judgment on the field. His comments came at the end of a five-day referees course on Friday. Something that is very important is honesty and fairness. In refereeing, you have to be honest. You have to be fair. You have to create a level playing field. It does not mean that you should balance the scales. So if you miss a penalty here by not calling it, you shouldn't find a way to miss another penalty to balance the scale. No. Your decisions are final and it should be fair based on the information that you have. Meantime, course participant Jordan Luke says he feels better equipped to perform at games after going through the course. This is my first referees course and it was a nice experience being here and being engrossed in refereeing. First of all, to my local instructors and Travis, Romy, um, Junior, the regular ones, the ones who've been here before because I've done two leagues in the under 15 and women's league with you all. And what Peter has done this week is affirm what you have been saying all along. Um, you guys have been giving me a lot of instruction, a lot of help. 25 referees were registered for the five-day course. Next up, President of Dominica Olympic Committee, Billy Doctrow, is encouraging all sporting and sundry to join with the committee in celebrating the 123rd anniversary of the International Olympic Committee by taking part in the annual Olympic Day Run. Doctrow says this year's event is expected to feature all sporting associations here displaying their skills on the Bay Front. Saturday, as you said, um, we'll be marking the 125th anniversary of the foundation of the International Olympic Committee and we'll be having the, what you call the Olympic Day Run and that will be um, done at the, um, it will take place at the Damien Junior Charles Boulevard, what we call it, the generally called the Bayfront and, um, and it will be under the theme of move, learn and discover. We'll be having the, 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 the normal run and um, which will be and we are we are asking all persons, you know, of, of different age groups, um, to to come forward and participate in the run. Um, we'll be having, and after the run, we'll be having the um, each part, each individual association having a small version of their of their of their actual sport, their specific sport, along along the entire length of the Bayfront. The 2017 Olympic Day Run has accommodations for cycling and persons who are wheelchair dependent. We are asking also that um, all persons who are in cyclists and cyclists and persons who are wheelchair bound because we made an adjustment to the to the route to accommodate everyone and um, so we're hoping that we can get a full a full turnout. We also asking um, persons who have had um, previous years um, Olympic dishes to wear them and come along so that we can have we can actually portray the, the, the history of the Olympic Day run in, in Dominica because it is a, a major activity worldwide and um, we believe it can sensitize persons to what the Olympic movement is all about. Moving on to weekend sports, five matches are scheduled in the Fort Young Hotel DCA Intermediate League. On Saturday, Gladiator Sports Club will go head-to-head -head with Dubla at Benjamins Park, Marino Evergreen versus Starlight at Soufriere, and Summit Sports Club versus Marino Sports Club. On Sunday, Dublin will do battle with Somerset at Benjamins Park, while Point Michelle Cricket Academy will come up against Maho. All matches begin at 11 a.m. Finally, the 2017 Guineas Knockout Domino League title will be up for grabs when Rockers and Wake Up Stars go head-to-head -head on Sunday. One of the biggest Domino Knockout Finals will be played this Sunday at the Purple Circle Beach in Portsmouth from 12.30 p.m. That's when Rockers on Pebbles, who boast players like Scott McFerrell, Vincent O'Brien, Hubert Remy, and Morrison Thomas will meet Wake Up Stars on Portsmouth, who also can depend on Captain Alan Bruno, Royston Cardo, Wayne McLaurins, and Denison Bell. That's all the sporting highlights for now. Join us next time.
Coming up, the weather forecast. Good evening, viewers. Welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am Janet McPherson, and I'll be your presenter this evening. Infrared satellite imagery showed this area of multi-layered clouds associated with a tropical wave across the extreme southern portion of the islands. This area of low-level clouds associated with a low-level trough moved across the area today. Visible satellite imagery today showed partly cloudy to cloudy skies across Dominica this afternoon. Radar imagery indicated some widely scattered showers throughout the island chain this afternoon. The weather for tonight, partly cloudy to cloudy with some scattered showers. Tomorrow, cloudy at first with some scattered showers becoming fair to partly cloudy with a few brief scattered showers by afternoon. Temperatures are expected to peak near 32 degrees Celsius. Seas tomorrow, slight to moderate, waves peaking up to 5 feet. Looking ahead for the next three days, on Saturday, cloudy at first with some scattered showers, becoming fair to partly cloudy with a few scattered showers by afternoon. By late Saturday into Sunday, a tropical wave is expected to move across the area. The weather therefore for Sunday, cloudy to overcast at times and breezy with scattered showers and a possible isolated thunderstorms. Persons in areas prone to flooding, landslides and falling rocks are advised to exercise a caution. By Monday, fair to partly cloudy skies are expected with a few brief scattered showers and hazy and breezy conditions will also be evident. Throughout the Caribbean tomorrow, fair to partly cloudy skies and a few scattered showers are expected across the island chain. On the international cities forecast, some rain expected in New York and London, partly cloudy skies in Miami, thunderstorm activity for Caracas and the clear skies in Beijing. Sunrise tomorrow at 5.36 a.m. and sunset at 6.39 p.m. We are in the hurricane season. Please keep up to date with weather information by calling our weather hotline at 447-5555 or visiting our website at weather.gov.dm. Have a good weekend and thank you for viewing. To end the news, the headlines again. Suspect in police custody after Vagrant's body is discovered on Bayfront early Friday morning. Police say they have solved 8 out of 12 homicides recorded so far this year and Foreign and CARICOM Affairs Minister Francine Barron addresses OAS Assembly in Mexico. Feel free to contact us at news at marvin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Kenny Williams. To all our viewers around the world, we thank you for watching. Join us next time.